market. Now, this is where it gets uh, quite interesting because we've seen the likes of, as I've mentioned, Will Smith monstrosity. That is an abomination unto the Lord and should be cast out in Mount Doom for nobody to ever see again. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, Jack here. Uh, let me take this off. How's it going? Jack here. Do you remember where we were a year ago? Talking about the wonders that AI could have brought were they to be implemented in different facets of our lives. Be it gaming with AI that would have had a lot more believable dialogue. Lord Voldemort? Or shall I call it Shaggy Batman? Mm, an interesting choice indeed. Both options have their own appeal and evoke different themes. Lord Voldemort carries a sense of darkness and mystery, while Second Dead Batman suggests a tale of heroism and tragedy. Music and audio were somewhere disregarding the ethics of what creators would have thought about having the voices utilized to say some silly shit. Did I ever tell you about Ahsoka Tano? She was your father's exotic teenage alien apprentice. A fine piece of jailbait from a more civilized age. And of course images that went from the meme-worthy, drippy, all around too uncanny. And of course the video format. One that stuck out to me though was that of uh, Will Smith touching oh, his spaghetti. spaghetti. That stuff was uh, freaking horrifying. But those were the stuff that we got to see about a year ago. The advancement that he has taken however, has been uh, quite quick to say the least. More and more models have made insane leaps and have now created stuff that are quite indistinguishable from real life at least at first glance. And now the recent addition to this that both inspires awe and also a certain amount of a fear and disturbance in me is none other than one of the greatest competitor OpenAI. Okay so Sam Altman and OpenAI, um, we are not touching on the drama that was happening there with the board of director a couple of months ago, released this new thing here, Sora, that is now capable of generating, well, videos that are almost a minute long, based simply on prompts. Straight up text prompts, you don't need a base video for image weighting or anything of the sort. You just put in some text inputs and it will spit out some stuff for you to, uh, I guess, entertain you or some shit. Now, this is where it gets uh, quite interesting because we've seen the likes of, as I've mentioned, Will Smith monstrosity. That is an abomination unto the Lord and should be cast out in Mount Doom for nobody to ever see again. But these things have been evolving. I'm not talking about deep fakes here, where you get to train uh, the AI to actually copy things or plaster a new face on something else. These have uh, a lot of legal ramification and it gets really disturbing. I'm straight up talking about text here. And examples that I put into these videos are the likes of this one. So I'm just gonna read you the prompt for this one, right? It's called, a stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm, glowing neon and animated city signage. She wears a black leather jacket, a long red dress and black boots. There's more to be checking out there and uh, you can go further on. Like she carries a black purse, she wears sunglasses, red lipsticks and walks confidently and casually. The streets is damp and reflective, creating a mirror effect on the colorful light many pedestrians walk about. And just watch this. It is incredible at first glance. Like you can see the pore on her face, the reflection that is tracking incredibly well. Even the camera work at first glance is um, quite interesting. Now, obviously, for those who like are working with video editing and or are just very keen in the eye, will see and spot some weird stuff, right? The way that people in the background are walking somewhat realistically but like check it more specifically and you just see them disappearing or somewhat gliding over the surface the reflection the frame rate is quite different but still the clove physics is there it's like something generated from a 3d program you would imagine that the weight of the clothes are actual things that have been calculated and rendered properly the lighting is not bad either like right you can spot that wrong frame rate right but and the reflectiveness is almost accurate like it is frightening and it gets even better like look at this one
obviously you can say, oh, this is fake, right? These are mammoth. They don't exist yet. But when it comes to something like this, waves that are crashing on the, sh on the shoreline, like you see this in first hand, what are you going to think? This this is just stock footage. There's no second guessing what this drone shot was made from, but it's just a prompt. And that is the thing that I find to be both very interesting and also somewhat frightening about this, because it definitely can serve a purpose. For one, for content creators, it is amazing. It is a wonderful tool for you to have access to very niche and very specific stock footage. Like, imagine somebody who wants to have a rendering on something stemming from the 80s, or this, which is supposed to be a historical rendition of a Californian gold rush. It looks the way that you will expect it to look and that will fool anybody like i've made use of stock footage in the past to explain some stuff that were very specific to uh, make game reviews where i needed the motion of something in the background or to replace an individual there or insert myself it's genuinely amazing to see that you can now just with a text prompt get the motion of like a moving train with the reflection that seem quite accurate and actually can see past the glass and everything. It is amazing. And then it strikes you that a thing that is super important to remember about this is that this is the worst state that this technology will ever be in. This is just the beginning. One year ago, we had the past the bullshit. And this year we have this. Strikingly, photorealistic renditions of things that could appear to be made from a movie set. A zoom shot in an eyeball that could have fooled me if I wasn't looking for the flaws. And this is great, but there's always a but. The usage of these things carry some frightening ramifications. Like, for example, the pretty obvious one is a misinformation. Like an example, thinking that a president has been arrested, thinking that the Pope is going to drop a whole new testament sponsored by Balenciaga, uh, thinking that the Eiffel Tower was on fire. It, 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 that was weird. <laughs> Can we all agree that that was weird? But people believe this. Because in the same way that most people don't make it past the headline of a new article or if they add in a bit more effort, just skim through it, most people do not care about the fine details. They'll just be doom scrolling, and if you catch them in the act of spreading some misinformation, they'll be like, Oh shit, boy, that's crazy. I didn't know. Uh, anyways, personally, I'm imagining which result this can have on a political climate, especially when it comes to an election year. Who's gonna believe who? Like, if you're an investigator, through what loops do you have to go to verifying if some claims are false or true, especially when images are getting so bloody accurate? What if it's a criminal case, right? We already know that such things as eyewitness testimony just don't work, at least they are very flawed. Yet still, a lot of people are being incarcerated because of that. What happens when people are checking would-be uh, footage on social media to condemn somebody? Because yes, a lot of times the culpabilities of individuals is just just in the court of public opinion. Like, I can put out an image of myself through one of these AI and try to do some image waiting and try to edit things back in for to try a different style and it never gets me right right first of all because ai technology is somewhat it's very very bad with black people so perhaps that is to our benefit yet still if you are a person whose likeness is out there on the internet with ton and tons of footage of you that can be used to train an ai how bad does it get? Like some of us will be aware of the Taylor Swift situation with the AI images of her that's been floating around the internet that made it so fast to the US government even commenting on that. And while a lot of people are going to be very quick to just say, oh yeah, she's a celebrity and then the government can take care of that when it's her, but when it comes to poor people and fuck her, man, it doesn't matter. She's a celebrity, she has a fine life. Those arguments are so bloody disgusting and so stupid because have you no idea how quickly that goes from her to the normal person? There are cases upon cases upon cases of people being blackmailed, school children who are underaged being blackmailed or abused because of these things. And it's not just a US-centric issue, it happens all across the world, where there is a computer and a person that has access to it, if they have malicious intent, 
they can do this. And that's why I have to remind you once more, this is just the beginning of it. And the hope is of course for many to say that, oh, finally, this is the wake up call that a lot of people are going to have to be a little, a little bit more critical of the use of social media and applications. You're not just going to be swiping something to feed an algorithm or feeding an AI with the footage of yourself. Like shit, people had it hard enough where their images were just being photoshopped onto bodies that were not even theirs. But now it's... It's even worse. Like, I do understand that there are already some legal measures taken there into account, like such things as revenge porn is wholly illegal, but this is not stopping people from doing this. Now, mind you, I want to make something clear. I am not saying this to like demonize AI whatsoever. Now, mind you, I am not saying this to like demonize AI whatsoever. There are some pretty good users and some of the things that have been showcased here have given me a lot of great ideas. Such things as the implementation of this in, let's say, adjusting camera works in video games. Like they have a video generated of a car going through a dirt track that was very reminiscent to something from like Cyberpunk 2077 or any of the uh, many car games out there, Dirt, Rally, Forza, you name it. The stylized art can even be something that can age digital artists who hopefully don't have their work stolen nor uh, credited to, to the use of making these things, uh, helping them to the creative process, give them a mock-up of something that they can then iterate on or evolve from the stuff that they are making. Because this AI, of course, are not, are not there where they need to be just yet. They still have a lot of flaws. Proportions and motions are not quite there. They absolutely still suck at scaling. And again, black people, they don't exactly get things right. Yet with all of those flaws, somebody is still liable to get fooled by grandma trying to blow the candles off her birthday cake and unnoticed her crippling arthritis. I really hope that that stays a thing that they don't manage to get hands right ever. That would be like one of the straight up biggest clues to how something is AI or not. And boy, I want to embrace AI and matter of fact, I have sometimes the little background that I have my PC right now was AI generated because I just wanted to have something that fit with the aspect ratio of my screen and then I could Photoshop it and put it there. Like it can make wonders. The thing however is that there are potentials that people should also keep in mind. But the unfortunate part is that most likely a lot will not care for it. So yeah, uh, we'll see what will happen in a year or so, how wild these things are going to evolve and yeah, just how mind blown we're going to be left or how scared we will be.